So to begin, I want you all to take your hand, place your hand at the back part of your neck and feel around. What do you feel? Bones, you feel your backbone. You feel the vertebrate, the bones that make up the backbone. And if we look at scientists and zoologists, we tend to look at an animal kingdom and we keep subdividing that into groups based upon certain characteristics. One way to look at the animal kingdom is to divide it into two groups. One, the vertebrates, those animals that have that backbone, and the other is to look at the invertebrates, animals that lack the backbone. Vertebrates are divided up into common classes, which you may have heard before, and we'll be addressing these in much greater detail as the cruise goes on. We have the sharks and the rays, we have the bony fish, we have amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Most of us are familiar with these groups of animals. Few of us have familiarity with invertebrates, which account for the majority of organisms on this planet. We begin to look at the majority of multicellular organisms, and they're all invertebrates. Well, what are the major groups of invertebrates? Well, we can divide them up into sponges, which you've heard about before, jellyfish or sea jellies, worms, mollusks, arthropods, and echinoderms. And I'm going to be talking about these groups in a moment. But you know what? Let's begin. Let's begin with sponges. First of all, take a good look at this sponge. When a zoologist looks at this, this is not a sponge. This is some piece of manufactured work. This is chemically digested cellulose, plant material that's been digested, broken down, and then what you do is bubble air through it. So when it forms and solidifies, you get something that we look at called a manufactured sponge. 